It's been two weeks since I dug the hole and poured the concrete to create the pier, the first step in creating the observatory. And, well, everyone who does astrophotography knows if you buy a new piece of gear, it's going to summon bad weather. So, we've had two weeks of clouds and rain. But, that worked out well as some moisture is good for the curing of concrete. And it gave me lots of time to go about planning the next steps. The next step for me is building a deck around the pier, and I needed to decide, once and for all, exactly which design to go with when I built the observatory structure itself. Did I want something very large that I could walk into and reside in? Or did I want to go with something more compact? Now, everyone has their own opinions, but for my purposes, I decided to go with something more compact. My plan is to focus on astrophotography, because frankly, it doesn't matter how big your telescope is. You're going to gather more detail by using cameras fixed on a single point of the sky for hours or even days at a time, something that simply cannot be done by a human just watching through a telescope. So a micro-observatory it is. And that's handy. Building it's going to go faster and cost less. Now where I am building is in an old corral where I used to train horses. And eventually, there's going to be another micro-observatory in here, and possibly a warm room mainly to serve as a place to keep some equipment, such as the Wi-Fi expander that allows me to monitor and operate the telescope from my lab over in the cottage about 100 meters away. Eventually, given some time and opportunity, I'll also set up an infrared focus telescope and a radio telescope in this area. So I guess you could think of this old corral as the beginning of an observatory farm. Step number one in building the deck is to clear that dirt pile that I made when I dug out the hole out of the way. And step number two is to lay out the basic corners. You'll notice I haven't laid down stakes or anything, I'll get to that. But this isn't the first structure that I've built. When I lived in the far north, I built an entire cabin with nothing but an axe and a draw knife to remove bark from the trees. And I grew up on farms where I've built camps and held built stables and things. I don't by any means consider myself an expert builder, but I have a rough idea what to do and what to expect. And a lot of this I figure I can put together without going through too much trouble. After all, the floor of the observatory is essentially a floating deck. Now building a concrete pad around the pier would certainly give a sense of greater stability, but in these parts it's not really feasible. I live on top of a mountain, so there's no chance of flooding. Water can only go down from here. But in winter, it can snow as much as two meters. The snow itself doesn't represent any real problem, but I need a foot or so beneath the floor for water to run off. If I were to build directly on the ground, the inside of the observatory would be a pond for a couple weeks during the spring runoff. So floating deck it is. I don't plan to dig out under the deck footings, I'm not going to dig out the ground and put in concrete and whatnot. The main reason is I've built other camps and sheds on my land here, I'm very familiar with this ground. And that soil is only a couple centimeters deep until you begin to hit gravel and rock. And the soil itself is very hard packed, probably from training one ton horses on it for so long. I'm pretty sure if I were to bother to dig out the ground and place gravel, I would just be creating a place for snow melt to catch. This ground is hard. It'll hold the corners of the observatory perfectly. And the structure is small enough, I can shim it up back to level should the ground ever shift. Now it's time for an exciting part, unwrapping the sonotube around the pier. Since there will be so much snow and freezing water in winter, I'm going to make the outside of the pier very perfect so there's no places for water to catch and freeze. This I'm sure will increase the life expectancy of the pier, and it was a simple job. Since the pier is fresh, it didn't really need to be washed. And in those areas that I thought needed to be smoothed out, I just put a little quick creek concrete adhesive on there, and use some quickrete fast setting compound to create a stiff, clay-like concrete and work it into any imperfections in the pier. Fast setting quickrete hardens to 6,000 PSI, almost as hard as regular concrete in just 24 hours. And I learned as I worked on the observatory that meteorology is now predicting a clear night tonight. So I'm gonna take my faithful old companion, Gilly Doo, out for a walk on the back 40 and put the small telescope, the 81 millimeter APO refractor on the pier. I can at last test my ability to run power out to the mount and Wi-Fi, make sure I can control it adequately from the cottage, and also confirm the mount's alignment. This first light setup went very smoothly, and it is very easy to level and align a mountain telescope on a pier, much easier than it is to do so on a tripod. 
Now I only had three expanders and I thought I was going to need to order another one or two to get Wi-Fi from the cottage out to the observatory. But I learned a nifty little trick recently. By locking the expander's operating frequency down to 2.8 GHz, I can increase their range 500%, meaning each individual expander is good to about 100 meters. Using only two expanders, I was easily able to maintain Wi-Fi contact and control of the telescope mounts at the observatory. Shortly, I'm going to dig some pressure-treated 3-meter posts into the ground to make an above-ground Ethernet cable to run an even more solid connection out there. But that'll happen after I finish preparing and building the floating deck and floor itself. With all the focus on building the observatory at this time, I hadn't really given any thought to what I wanted to shoot in the evening. But with the stars out clear and bright like they were, I settled on a target that has interested me for a while, but that I haven't taken the time to shoot yet. The beautiful stardust mountains and rivers just above the trunk in the famous Elephant Trunks Nebula. I shot the elephant trunk itself about a month ago, but the seeing was so poor that even though I kept the telescope trained on it all night, I didn't consider it a great image. Passable, but not great. But with the seeing conditions like they were tonight, I was expecting much better results. And the mount on the pier delivered. I've graduated to the advanced sequencer of Nina, though using my own templates to make the setup very quick and simple. As simple and easy really as setting up the legacy sequencer and let the telescope do its thing on the mount all night. Guiding remained smooth, steady and perfect, and it executed a flawless meridian flip. So I consider the first light test of the pier perfect. And today, I'll finish building the floating deck around the pier. And next week, we start the observatory structure itself.